92 members of the Allied Fifth Army in Italy become United States citizens in naturalization ceremonies conducted by Lieutenant General Mark Clark and government officials. The Oath of Citizenship. These servicemen and women, now American citizens, are of 20 different previous nationalities. A State Department representative distributes naturalization certificates. Good citizens and good soldiers. In subsequent Fifth Army ceremonies, the 100th Battalion, United States Inf., composed entirely of American citizens of Japanese descent, is honored for valorous combat service by General Clark. For a brilliant fighting record in the entire Italian campaign, the 100th Battalion is cited as a unit and receives citation streamers to be permanently attached to its battle colors. In one combat action after another, these American fighting men have brought honor to themselves and to a nation which is proud to call them citizens. United States Supreme Court Justice Jackson swears in Vice President Sergio Osmena as the new president of the Philippine Commonwealth. Congratulated by his daughter, Senor Osmena signs his oath of office as successor to the late Manuel Quezon. Last rites in Washington for Quezon, beloved leader of his people. He died at 65, temporarily exiled in the United States. Full military honors for a gallant statesman and soldier and staunch friend of the United States. Ten years ago, the Philippines became a republic, and Manuel Quezon, its first president. And then in February 1942, the Japanese overran his country, and he escaped by submarine. His great dream to return there with MacArthur, now cut short by death. Arrival at Arlington Cemetery, where the body of Manuel Quezon will lie until the enemy has been driven from the Philippines, and he can rest permanently in his beloved native soil. For 17 days without let-up, American planes and ships assault the island of Guam and the Marianas. 5,000 miles from San Francisco, 1,500 miles from Tokyo and Manila. Now a shattering zero-hour bombardment by the combined forces. Assembled for attack, most of the Navy's 5th Fleet and ships of the United States 3rd Amphibious Group. A mighty striking force, superbly equipped in manpower and materiel, and in the accumulated experience of a dozen previous major invasions since the Great Pacific Offensive began. Landing barges and amphibious tractors streamed toward shore, bearing first wave marine landing troops. Exactly 31 months and 9 days from the date of Japanese conquest, 
the return to Guam. PC boats accompany the assault wave, their guns pounding the shore. Close now, enemy fire is heavy. Three landing craft are hit. strength, troops and equipment strike for the beach. In three and a half hours of fierce fighting, Marines gain a toehold on Guam's western shore. flag on the beachhead. A wounded Marine fights on. Light artillery comes up to support the advance elements. Fighting inland ahead of schedule with flamethrower, rifle, grenade and machine gun. installations wrecked by the fury of the combined offensive. The price of success is not small. With the control of Guam, American forces have now acquired an invaluable base, only five bomber hours from the Philippines and Japan. Generals Geiger, Turnage, and Noble inspect frontline positions on Guam. The retaking of strategic territory in the Pacific continues. <laughs> 